Ok, ci siamo. Um, benvenuti a tutti, uh, benvenuti a, al webinar tenuto da Antavo uh, che parlerà di, di come creare uh, loyalty program di successo. Io sono Mattia, sono VP Italia di Antavo Enterprise Consultant e sono qui con Jan Rogler, um, VP of Strategy and Insights. Um, prima di iniziare ad entrare nel, nel clou del, di quello che, di cui vogliamo trattare oggi, vorrei spendere un minuto uh, giusto per dire chi è e, e cosa fa Antavo. Antavo è una piattaforma di, uh, una piattaforma di loyalty management con, uh, con sede a Londra, ma uh, uffici partner a Milano e, e tutta la parte R&D viene gestita poi da, da Budapest. È un'azienda che nasce nel, nel 2016 eh, e ad oggi conta quasi 80 persone. Um, serviamo clienti di, eh, da diversi ambiti, diverse industrie. Eh, primo tra tutti il Luisa Vierona, che avremo poi l'occasione di entrare un po' più nel dettaglio riguardo al, al progetto Luisa Vierona, ma anche aziende quindi in Europa, Stati Uniti, Australia e un po' sparsi in giro per tutto il mondo. Um, non mi dilungherei oltre, um, un'informazione un soltanto, parte dell'intervento sarà tenuto in inglese, parte dell'intervento sarà tenuto in italiano. Um, lascio la parola, la parola a Jörg. Thank you. Is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Mattia. Thanks for the introduction. Um, you have heard a bit about the company. Um, I'm going to focus on the first part of the presentation today to talk about loyalty programs from a strategic perspective. And I'm going to try to answer three questions for you today. The first one is why. Why do we want loyalty programs? What are they good for? How do they help you as a business? And I'm going to keep that short today because you already joined this webinar. So I think you've already talked about the why to yourself in your company and identified that this could be a good idea. The second question I'm going to talk about is how. So what should be the structure of a loyalty program? How do loyalty programs traditionally look like? What has changed? And how do we believe at Antavo a modern new loyalty program for the next generation should look like? Um, and then I'm going to talk about the what, which means what is in it for you? What is the result that you can expect? What can come out of this loyalty program for you? Um, I have a case study prepared, Luisa Veroma, as Mattia mentioned. Um, the second part of the presentation, Mattia will um, take you to basically get to know our product a bit better. First with an overview architecture, how is it structured, how does it integrate, and then with a short demo to illustrate how it can be used and um, what it would look like for our customers. Um, we'll have a QA and a at the end, so um, if you want to have any questions discussed later, please use the chat and um, we'll, we'll look at that at the end of the presentation. So let's go straight into the first topic, the why. Now, I'm probably not going to tell you anything that you haven't heard from the perspective of repeat customers being really important for your business, but I dug out a few statistics that just illustrate this point. Repeat customers are the fuel for growth. If you're a retailer, if you're a brand, and all of your customers only ever buy once, you're going to struggle to be a growth business. You're going to struggle to be profitable. Repeat customers are more valuable. They buy again much more likely than first-time buyers. So you're beginning to build a long-term relationship with those repeat customers. And they generally generate a large proportion of the revenue of the store of a brand of a retailer. 40% is actually a conservative number here. I've been in cases where it's the vast majority of revenue. But I also wanted to talk about the good news on this slide. And the good news really is that these repeat customers are totally within reach. We read a lot, or I read a lot online about new generations, the millennials, Generation Z, that they're no longer loyal, that they're no longer you know, connected with the brand, they no longer want to invest in a relationship. This is not actually true if you go into the, into the subject a bit more into detail and if you, if you read a bit more research. It is a lot harder to make these customers loyal because they expect a lot more. You know, they have the world at their fingertips now, mobile, the internet, information, reach, everything needs to be immediate. But the first number here, 91% of customers who feel valued stay with the brand. Those numbers are still true for younger generations as they are for the older generations. Um, the other two numbers, 
are really then about the context of loyalty programs. So if customers do want to feel valued and stay with the brand, they do put a high emphasis on the presence of a really good loyalty or discount program. 75% choosing a store based on it, and over 85% say that they want a brand to have a loyalty program. So the statistics are quite strong. Now let's talk about the how. So how are you going to tap into that potential of these customers who want to be loyal and who want a loyalty program? And I'm going to take you on a, on a bit of a journey from the beginnings of loyalty programs. So traditional loyalty programs emerged probably 30, 40 years ago, and, and you're all familiar with them, be it the, the stamp card at your local coffee shop or the points collection card that you all know, um, the traditional loyalty as we know it. Earn and burn logic, so you collect points and then you spend them to get a benefit, a discount, something. Um, I've listed five, I would say, issues or limitations of these programs. Now, I'm not going to say these programs were wrong to launch, and I'm not going to say that all these mechanisms are no longer valid, valid. but I'm going to talk to you about these five points and then illustrate why they need to change. The first one is we are all struggling with the discount seekers. Those customers who are waiting for the discount, they're waiting for Black Friday, they're waiting for the next campaign, and they're not buying anything without the discount. By offering them a points-based loyalty discount program, you're not going to change that perception. You're not going to change that behavior. You're just moving the discount from a direct discount to a slightly delayed discount. And that slightly delayed discount gives you a financial benefit. Um, talking about financial benefits, one of the reasons traditional loyalty was successful is that it was able to mitigate and, and limit costs because you no longer have to give a straight discount at the first transaction, but people have to buy a second time, a third time, and then they get the discount a bit later. So pretty soon the finance department got involved into these programs and they started to say, well, wouldn't it be great if we had even less redemption, and even less of these points were spent for discounts and if we don't have to give any discount money. So they started to introduce point expiration, rewards limitation, the cost for getting a reward was increased. Um, so the breakage here, which makes a lot of profit for a loyalty program, started to annoy customers. Customers don't like that. I've, I've seen a lot of instances where brands that had no points expiration started to introduce one, and there was just a shitstorm on social media that, that kicked off and it was really hard to manage. And the damage to the brand was a lot worse than the financial benefit of limiting those uh, reward redemptions. The third point where a traditional loyalty program is struggling to still make a difference is the fact that you're no longer able to really differentiate from your competition. It is incredibly easy today to launch um, a points-based earn and earn loyalty program. So all your competitors can immediately copy what you have to offer to your clients. Um, obviously that no longer fulfills them. One of the objectives is to make your customers more loyal because now they just buy where they want to buy and they get the points because they're members everywhere. Um, the fourth point here, and that is a, is a double-edged sword, it's about behavior. The one side is you really want to use your loyalty program to understand your customers to the utmost. You want to know everything about them and you can do that because the loyalty program gives an incentive to your customers to share all the information about them, to share their preferences, their behaviors, their spending. If you're only ever registering what they buy, because that's the only thing you reward, you will not know a lot about your customers that you could find out if you were rewarding other things. And the second part is that um, because you don't understand behavior, you also aren't able to change a lot of the behavior that is very valuable, loyal behavior, such as content generation, such as word of mouth referrals, such as just brand engagement, coming to your site, reading your content, sharing it on Twitter. This is, in my opinion, especially true because um, today, compared to even just 10, 15 years ago, the um, the buying cycle is completely broken, completely changed compared to a couple of years ago. So it's very hard to recollect the different users and customers' behavior into one. So you really want to try to somewhat influence how they how the customer makes a decision and makes a purchase, but also at the same time try to understand the different path by which the customer comes and makes the purchase. I mean, what you're touching on, I'll, I'll get a bit more into that a bit later. Is that you know, all these issues are 
exacerbated or, or made even stronger by the fact that customer behavior has changed a lot and their yeah. preferences have changed. I have a bit of content on that later. Um, which is right here later. So <laughs> customers have changed. That's the reality. Um, we can't work outside of that reality and we have to adapt to it. So what you see on the left is changes in customer attitudes. The first one is the loyal behavior is much more than shopping. Customers don't express their loyalty only with their checkbook. They express their loyalty through how they engage with the brand. Um, if they're queuing up in front of the store because the next product release is coming out. If I'm talking to my friends about the brand and how much I love it, loyal behavior is irrational when it becomes really valuable because that's when you build emotional loyalty. So personally, I have a lot of Apple devices, for example. I'm just very loyal to the brand. I love the brand. It's not rational. I know other devices are better or cheaper, but I'm still going for the Apple device. Um, that's the kind of behavior that's much more emerging today. And what it means for the program on the right side is that you have to incorporate all of this loyal behavior into your program, and you need to reward it. So customers that bring new customers, customers that are writing product reviews, customers that are sharing your content with their social network, all of these customers are very loyal, and you should reward them for it. The second part of change customer attitudes and behavior is personalization. It wasn't nice to have. And you know, I remember 15 years ago when we launched some email campaigns, we managed to get the first name and the right salutation in it. We were very, very proud that we personalized our communication. This is no longer sufficient. Personalization is now mandatory, and it actually needs to be more than hi, Katie. You have to understand what channel your customers are preferring, when they are willing to buy, when they're interested in content, what type of style preferences they have, how well connected are they actually socially? Do you want to talk to them about word of mouth and referrals, or do you want to talk to them about buying something? So personalization is something that your program has to have. You need to personalize the communication. You need to personalize the rewards that you have for your customers. You need to personalize what behavior you want to incentivize to these people, because you want to speak to them as an individual. That is expected today. And you know the program that we saw before is no longer able to do that. The other two points here are a lot about customers' choices. One, what do they choose? And two, how do they choose? What do they choose? Increasingly, we see that customers are preferring time and convenience over money. Basically, they're willing to pay extra for convenience, for speed, for right in the moment. The second is experiences become much more important than possessions. You need to have something that you can share. If you, if you don't have a picture of it, it didn't happen. Now, I don't want to go too deep. You all know that the sharing economy has come up and is now dominating and beginning to really influence the business world. This is the fact, this is like a manifestation of experiences over possessions. So in your loyalty program, make sure you're using those changed attitudes. Giving benefits from the program that are simplifying the experience, extended returns, store pickups, um, preferred checkouts, or a preferred, like a preferred change room if you have a fashion store for members where there's no queue. Those, those experiences, those simplifications will differentiate you from your competitors and they will make your customers want to come back. And the second thing is exploit that emotion of memorable moments. Um, creating experiences that people can share that are visual, that are memorable, this is an element that no program should go without today. And then the last point, this is what Mattia, you just touched on, mm -hmm. is the way decisions are made, the way internet communication is held. The journey is no longer linear, it's broken. Customers are using curated content, they're using influences, they're using their own network, recommendations from friends to make their choices and their decisions. All you can aim for as a brand is to be present in all of these spots, but you can no longer control it. Um, the best way to be present whenever these conversations are happening is if you align the program with the beliefs and interests and with the values of your customer. So if your brand is about sustainability, have elements of sustainability in your program. Reward customers for bringing back their used clothes for recycling. They will talk about it. That's how you get in the conversation. And very important is also to be able to, um, to have the same message throughout all the channels because one of the biggest struggles today is unifying the message and treating the customer who wants to interact with 
one brand, not several uh, individuals and several brands, but want to have the perception that it's one brand behind uh, each, um, each of the channels. Much together. Consistency is incredibly yeah. important because because customers are starting to, they're starting to talk to businesses <laughs> like they're talking to friends, and you would find it awkward if you told your friend something in the pub, and the next time you saw him in the bus commuting to work, he wouldn't remember any of it. He would yeah. talk to you about something completely different. So you got to be consistent, and you know I've seen brands that position themselves as luxury brands, and then they run a discount scheme. It doesn't always like, that doesn't work. I don't get it as a customer. It feels weird. Yeah. Um, so if we jump to the next point, we have Antago belief the future of loyalty is what we call recognition loyalty. It's a new approach that is designed to overcome these challenges that I just outlined and give you the tools to really build a loyal customer base beyond transactional discounts. Um, recognition loyalty is based on three types of recognition. Being recognized as a loyal customer with rewards and benefits, first recognition. The second is that the brand recognizes who I am as an individual, the consistency we just mentioned, yeah. that you know they talk to me about what is interesting and relevant to me. And the third one is that I can recognize my own values and beliefs in the loyalty product as well. This means, and I've mentioned it before, overcoming the lack of customer information by maximizing all your customer insights, collecting data about their behavior, their preferences, their social circles, and how they, like basically how they live their daily life. Uh, instead of points just for spending, points and incentives for all types of engagements, or not just points, any incentive for all types of engagements. So if someone shares content from your product page five times, you should get rewarded for it. Rewarded with what? So instead of just financial rewards, start to reward with services and experiences. As I just outlined, these preferences are becoming stronger and stronger. So put them in the program to differentiate. Which then leads you to the opportunity to move a one-size-fits-all program to a really a program that's tailored. Because if you have more incentives, you have more rewards, you have more insight, then you can talk to customers in a relevant way. So that leads to that recognition loyalty framework that you see on the right. Traditional loyalty is still at the core. I think for 80 to 90% of programs, it still makes a lot of sense to have financial incentives to reward transactions and give some level of discounts. It still triggers behavior. It still triggers customer action very well. But surrounded with these new layers of loyalty, emotional rewards, engagement incentives, and a focus on brand values and customer values. And to do that, you need to have two things to really understand. You need to have the data science in place to collect customer information, to connect the customer information across all channels, across all touch points, and to then make that information actionable. So pull it back out of your system with algorithms, with decision tools, to deliver what's relevant to the customer at the right moment. And the final thing is this is where loyalty expertise becomes really important. There are tips and tricks, the mechanics of a loyalty program, how to best enroll them, how to best run a redemption, using elements of gamification, of behavioral science to really create you know, subconscious behaviors in your customers, building habits by, by rewarding repeat behavior. You can build a habit that customers will always log into their website every one day. So this is what they've done, and this is what they do. So this loyalty mechanics then makes everything even more impactful. That's the recognition loyalty framework. And that's the framework that Antavo has used build their technology. So our platform supports all of these elements that let's set these up easily, run these easily, change and test them very easily. This is the foundational thinking behind our technology. Mm, regarding that part, we're going to see um, a little bit later how this could actually be put in place with ease. Um, but yeah, I don't want to give any preview just yet. <laughs> <laughs> just a teaser. This is also some uh, behavioral science that yes. is applying here. <laughs> Um, if you go to the next page, I want to just illustrate a little bit as an example of a customer. We have Emma here. She is, well, millennial, Gen Z. I'm not sure exactly where the boundary is. She's one of that new generation that supposedly cannot be loyal. Um, the first thing we need to do before we figure out how Emma should interact with the loyalty programs to understand her a bit better. 
first step and learn what Emma is about. So what we'll find out, she's shopping online and on mobile. She's really active on social media. She's sharing posts, she's sharing content. She is promoting content of brands when it's interesting. She also cares about society. She wants to make an impact. She wants to leave a positive mark. Um, we also understand her disposable income. So she has money to spend. But with us, she only ever buys from a single category. So from a strategic perspective, we want to upsell her into a new category. But if we were to offer Emma at the first touch point after she joins the program an upsell discount, we probably would fail. That's why we're taking her along that journey. We're starting to first engage with Emma. We're incentivizing her, we're giving her points for being on our website, for being on our social media, for creating content for us. Creating content. We value her as an opinion leader. We value her opinion and we encourage her to share that opinion. We also offer her a chance to make a difference. The example I just showed, she can bring back the clothes that she's worn and we can use them either for recycling or actually to distribute them, you know, uh, with Sorry. charity. Correct. And all that can be incentivized again. And now that we've built kind of an emotional connection with Emma, now she's ready and now we can sell her more stuff. So it's possible, it's just become a bit harder, um, but with the right toolkit, we can take customers along that journey. What is very interesting though, and about this whole scenario uh, and work we're really today is that as soon as you win a customer, you're probably gonna keep it for longer for, compared to how it used to be before. Uh, it's true that it's harder to win loyal customer, but it's, I wouldn't say forever, but especially in the Italian market, uh, where relationships are very important, um, uh, that's definitely the case, and it reflects uh, completely what you just said. Yeah, it's, it's true. Actually, the, the country, the society, the environment we're, we're playing with has an influence on that as well. Yeah. So uh, that, that is definitely true. Um, now that finishes kind of the section on the how and how a loyalty program should look like, how it should be structured, how it should be applied. I have a bit of time left where I talk to you about the what. So what's in it for you? What do you get if you run this? The first perspective here is on an individual customer perspective, this is how your connection, how your engagement with the customer changes if you move from a traditional program that you see on the left, where you have really moments of happiness, moments of engagement, They're usually around the transactions, when people get points, or when people can use the, the rewards in the transaction. But that engagement flattens out after a very short time. Um, you know, we, we tend to forget quicker in the world of today, there's so much information, you know, we need to have constant reinforcement of a message to actually make it memorable. So you see we have these moments and you probably get some transactional uplift every time you offer a certain incentive or certain reward. But if you compare that with the recognition loyalty, um, customer engagement development on the right, we have all these, we call them the micro conversions. So on top of your transactions, you have these conversions where a customer performs a short engagement action and um, they log in they share something they do a treasure hunt on your website they find the rewards like more gamified interactions you're starting to see that the engagement level is continuing to increase and it's sustainable increase so you're ending up with a customer that's much more valuable and much more engaged to your brand and um, obviously this is just the PowerPoint slide so I do want to put some more meat behind what I'm saying um, and talk to you a little bit about a case study um, with Luisa Via Roma. Um, Luisa Via Roma is a Italian-based global luxury fashion retailer. Um, quite a success story in the world of e-commerce in Italy and we've been working with them for just under three years now. Um, initially we built quite a simple program. We built a program that was, I would say, probably 85% traditional loyalty, and we added a few elements of recognition loyalty, which is, in general, our recommended approach, start simple and grow over time. And um, with Lisa Roma, we are, the, the main thing that we are focused on early on was to incentivize engagement. So um, any social interaction, social follows, people get rewards and uh, incentives for that. Um, and then over time, I would say every six to eight months, we've revamped the program and introduced new mechanisms. Um, so next thing we did was a limited access club, sneakers club. So um, I think six times a year or ten times a year, 
um, limited edition design speakers are released globally. Luta Roma is one of the retailers that has them. And it used to be an issue that customers would rush to the website, one would be their first, buy all of them, and leave everyone else dissatisfied. So what we actually did, we introduced um, a sneakers club as a reward. So for you, you're using your points, you can buy access to the sneaker club, and then you have exclusive preferential access to these limited design sneakers, and you can only buy one. Um, and this has been a strong, tremendously successful reward. It's now um, also accessible via a price draw mechanism. And this has become the second most used reward right after the 10 euro discount voucher. So uh, it's amazing, uh, very successful. And so we're working with Luisa Roma all the time. We've introduced new elements, badges for continuous engagement. We've introduced luxury rewards, experiential weekends away in a holiday resort. Really tailoring it to the luxury audience, but also keeping it accessible for everybody. And the results that you see um, confirm what I stated earlier. And these are just year one benefits that we've realized. Um, so we've added 10 million euro in revenue to the top line. We've managed to do this by adding less than half a million euro in extra reward costs. So this is also by replacing an old discount scheme that they had with this more engaging program. We've improved the retention rate by over 50%. And so that focus on word of mouth and content generation, we were able to get more than a million extra site visits to the Luce Roma website from an acquisition perspective, an extra benefit that you don't always think about when you think about loyalty programs, but there's a lot of potential in supporting acquisition as well, especially when you go more into content, when you go more into yeah. social media. And um, this program has also then been recognized externally. Um, we won e-commerce awards in the UK last year. We recently won uh, the Dreyfus Awards um, as well for loyalty performance. And we have four awards by now in this program and we're we're aiming to, to win a few more. We have some new tricks up our sleeve. Um, we're just implementing some predictive algorithms. Um, so there's more to be told on this story in the, in the coming months for sure. Great. And that would conclude my part about the why, the how, and the what. And I'll hand back to Mattia, who will talk to you a bit more and give you a glimpse of our technology in the upcoming mm -hmm. time. Um, I will kindly ask you, before going that, I will switch to Italian uh, for all the speakers. Um, quindi l'unica cosa che, che chiedo a, agli spettatori è di prendervi nota eventualmente se avete già qualche domanda uh, riguardo a quanto appena trattato, di potete già iniziare a uh, condividere con noi le domande e le riprenderemo poi alla fine. Ok, detto ciò, mm, passiamo subito alla, alla parte prodotto, alla parte piattaforma. Mm, ciò di, di cui voglio parlare ora è giusto un'infarinatura, un una struttura generale di come la piattaforma si presenta. Um, come potete vedere in alto, uh, c'è tutta la parte online, store mobile e daily life, che sono sostanzialmente i canali uh, che, noi, che noi supportiamo, i canali tramite cui i brand retailer, i nostri clienti, possono interagire e interfacciarsi con, uh, con il cliente. Um, chiaramente la parte online è importante, integrandoci direttamente con, uh, con i più grandi uh, motori di e-commerce, uh, Loyalty Hub, che è sostanzialmente il portale, eh, il portale loyalty per il cliente. Questo poi può diventare anche disponibile in store, attraverso il kiosk, tablet, eccetera. E i widget, chiaramente, che sono fondamentali per, per guidare quelle che sono le abitudini di cui abbiamo appena parlato. Um, in negozio, uh, integrazioni direttamente con il punto cassa, uh, quindi la possibilità chiaramente di autenticare e di verificare l'appartenenza o meno al programma di loyalty, fondamentale per, per capire chi effettivamente oggi entra in negozio. Perché chiaramente quando un cliente acquista online è veramente facile capire e conoscere la persona e, e dare un nome a questa persona. Quando, uh, quando l'acquisto avviene in negozio chiaramente diventa molto più complicato. È un semplice incentivo uh, per il cliente nel farsi autenticare, può essere semplicemente uh, visita il negozio ogni giorno, visita il negozio una volta al mese, una volta a due mesi, tre mesi, uh, 
eh, ti permette di capire e eh, di associare l'acquisto ad una persona ben precisa e definita per poi dare il via a tutti i sistemi di personalizzazione, i meccanismi di personalizzazione ehm, di cui ho parlato io prima. Clienteling ovviamente, eh, quindi supportare tutte le attività in negozio eh, e Beacon che non, non spenderemo troppo tempo però sono comunque, comunque un, un sistema utile per, per interagire con il cliente in maniera eh, personalizzata ma allo stesso tempo scalabile e automatizzabile. Non dimentichiamo chiaramente poi tutta la parte mobile ehm, dove chiaramente andiamo ad integrarci con eh, eventuali applicazioni e mh, in particolare anche ehm, direttamente dalla piattaforma è possibile rilasciare delle, eh, noi chiamiamo digital loyalty pass che sostanzialmente per, ehm, per capirci è, è simile ai biglietti aerei che potete ricevere sul, sul telefono però chiaramente viene, viene utilizzata come, eh, come loyalty card sostanzialmente. Il vantaggio di questa, di questa tecnologia è che eh, essendo nativamente eh, presente il wallet, essendo nativamente presente su eh, telefoni iOS e Android, ehm, ti permette di ehm, mandare direttamente push notification senza dover necessariamente passare per l'autorizzazione alle, alle varie notifiche. Ehm, e potenzialmente mh, utilizzare questo sistema per, per mandare notifiche ad esempio geolocalizzate pensiamo a un cliente magari che è da sei mesi che non entra in negozio abbiamo preimpostato una campagna ehm, dove al passare dei sei mesi eh, il cliente magari transita con l'auto dal ritorno del lavoro verso casa vicino al negozio ehm, è possibile utilizzare questo, questo strumento per mandare una, una notifica al cliente vieni visita il negozio, ti offriamo un caffè e vediamo, e vediamo uh, la situazione, cerchiamo di capire come com puoi strutturare. Chiaramente poi uh, si può diventare molto più sofisticati nel tempo. E mh, dulcis in fundo, se vogliamo, la parte dei live, ovvero um, abbiamo parlato prima, abbiamo menzionato prima che chiaramente le abitudini uh, dei consumatori sono cambiate, uh, le modalità uh, di acquisto sono cambiate, le modalità di interazione cliente brand, cliente retailer sono cambiate. Um, un esempio che mi piace portare qua è ad esempio um, Adidas. Loro hanno addirittura acquistato un brand come Fantastic per, uh, per entrare nella quotidianità dei propri clienti. Uh, chiaramente questo è un esempio molto virtuoso di come uh, valori del brand eh, sono stati associati chiaramente con l'attività sportiva e questo può permettere poi a delle campagne se vogliamo ad una, ad una conoscenza molto più accurata di quello che è il consumatore. Ehm, detto ciò questa è tutta la parte cosiddetta front end quindi di interazione eh, e di contatto con, con il cliente c'è tutta una parte chiaramente dietro quella che sta alla base, quello che permette il corretto funzionamento e la corretta implementazione di queste strategie di engagement. Um, la parte loyalty mechanics, che è quella che abbiamo visto prima uh, riguardo la, la recognition loyalty, quindi l'ultimo anello esterno, ovvero um, un sistema, un sistema di design, okay? un design editor, che è quello che vedremo tra poco nella, nella demo, Uh, che ti permette di definire e creare tutte queste logiche uh, chiaramente moduli di diverso genere le, um, partendo dall'engagement alla gestione dei reward uh, piuttosto che chiaramente finalizzati al, alla semplice fase di acquisto um, del, del prodotto c'è chiaramente tutta una parte di customer data management quindi um, possibilità di creare report Uh, funzionalità di basic CRM, CRM uh, con la possibilità di collegare, abbiamo parlato prima, diversi dati, appunto cassa, online, social, um, e utilizzare tutte queste informazioni e creare quello che è il profilo unico uh, dei clienti. Perché come abbiamo detto prima, um, è importante avere una visione a 360 gradi di quelle che sono uh, le abitudini e le interazioni del cliente con il brand. Um, 
e quindi, eh, quindi si poi risulta fondamentale riuscire ad avere una, una visione univoca su tutti questi aspetti. E chiaramente, eh, poi ricollegandosi anche alla parte in alto a destra sulle AI services, grazie a una conoscenza, una molle di dati che erano presenti anche qualche anno fa, ma semplicemente non si era in grado di analizzare, di sviluppare eh, dei sistemi e degli algoritmi che permettessero di ehm, monitorare e trarre conclusioni da questa mole di dati ehm, ad norme. Oggi chiaramente eh, questo eh, invece è possibile. Eh, abbiamo parlato prima che adesso stiamo lavorando su eh, un algoritmo che permetta di predire di, pre, eh, di predire il churn, ovvero la tendenza di un cliente dopo i primi mesi, mh, analizzando quello che è sostanzialmente l'attività, l'interazione tra cliente e brand, di predire quando e con quale eh, probabilità quel cliente verrà perso a distanza di un anno, ad esempio. Eh, ed è possibile chiaramente istruire questi algoritmi per fare ulteriori analisi successivamente. E chiaramente tutto questo, lo sappiamo benissimo, non, non spenderemo troppo tempo su, su questo argomento oggi, però comunque è importante menzionarlo, che chiaramente tutta la parte sicurezza eh, è fondamentale. Un tavolo si, si basa su, um, su un'architettura su Google Cloud e chiaramente eh, compliance con tutti gli aspetti legati alla GDPR, perché fa da sé che raccogliendo una mole di dati importante eh, è, se vogliamo, necessario Ehm, trattare questi dati con, uh, con la massima cura. Detto ciò, passerei uh, prima, di, um, prima di entrare nel core uh, legato al, al design, sostanzialmente al, al sistema di uh, al design editor, okay? all'editor, all'automation editor, uh, vorrei spiegare un attimo come um, come viene sfruttato, come, come un tavolo eh, permette di creare tutte queste automazioni. Tutto quello che succede, eh, tutto quello che avviene tra cliente e brand viene registrato all'interno di un tavolo come un evento. Okay? Eh, sia, sia, questo, eh, sia questo accade in negozio, online, mobile, abbiamo visto con applicazioni di terze parti, ad esempio Fitbit, eh, piuttosto che... Um, applicazioni varie sostanzialmente e eh, tutto questo stream di eventi eh, è visualizzabile all'interno della piattaforma di loyalty alcuni esempi uh, il cliente si registra al programma di loyalty il cliente compie un acquisto il cliente uh, condivide contenuti sui social media piuttosto che lascia una, uh, una review sul prodotto Um, eccetera eccetera queste informazioni qua ti permettono di um, prima di tutto arricchire e conoscere chiaramente il cliente e uh, definire chiaramente modelli predittivi uh, come abbiamo visto prima grazie a più uh, vantaggi algoritmi di AI però allo stesso tempo definire segmenti molto più accurati rispetto allo standard RFM che era tenere in considerazione soltanto uh, informazioni legate all'acquisto e alla frequenza Uh, qua invece oggi possiamo entrare e conoscere molto più anche le abitudini dei consumatori dal punto di vista di interazione con il brand stesso e creare dei segmenti che rispecchino, dei sistemi di interazione con il cliente che rispecchino le informazioni che il cliente oggi condivide con noi e chiaramente su questo creare le varie strategie. Ora, mh, passiamo subito sulla parte demo e vi mostro però come, come si presenta la piattaforma uh, nel, nel suo intero. Um, questa chiaramente è una, come abbiamo detto, una piattaforma in SaaS, quindi che, uh, che viene gestita interamente online, e uh, in questa parte qua vedremo il, il modulo automation, sostanzialmente, che è il design editor, uh, che permette di, um, di sfruttare tutte le, le potenzialità, sostanzialmente, e di creare quelli il sistema di automatismi di interazione tra i clienti. Um, è fondamentale um, che l'obiettivo, se vogliamo, um, per ogni brand dovrebbe essere quello di cercare di creare un rapporto uno ad uno 
brand cliente, però chiaramente su scala, perché sappiamo benissimo che altrimenti i costi andrebbero, ehm, andrebbero alle stelle. Detto ciò, ehm, qua chiaramente vediamo alcuni template eh, che, sono possibili, eh, che è possibile visualizzare. Quello che vedremo noi oggi è sostanzialmente un, eh, come si può facilmente impostare eh, le logiche del programma. Per logica intendo Uh, la possibilità di uh, definire, ad esempio abbiamo parlato di punti per semplicità, ma possono essere semplicemente logiche che restano uh, nascoste nel, nella parte back office per la gestione del, del programma di loyalty. Ad esempio, um, è un sistema chiaramente drag and drop, come abbiamo detto viene, si basa su eventi, e in questo caso l'evento che abbiamo uh, definito, che abbiamo scelto, è il checkout, quindi quando il cliente compie un acquisto. Uh, è possibile definire dei filtri legati al, al cliente, quindi al profilo del cliente che compie il checkout, piuttosto che definire filtri per i tipi di eventi. Ad esempio, um, creare campagne magari diverse da negozio a negozio o da country a country. Um, perché magari semplicemente uh, le logiche uh, di interazione con il cliente possono variare, abbiamo visto prima che chiaramente la parte di localizzazione è fondamentale um, ed è possibile utilizzare questi filtri per andare a personalizzare ancora di più l'esperienza. Detto ciò, um, definito quelli che sono gli attributi del cliente, um, è semplicissimo con il sistema drag and drop, in questo caso... Uh, In questo caso prenderemo in considerazione l'acquisto la, la, totale okay? e ehm, indichiamo se l'acquisto è superiore a 1,99 ehm, si andrà a valutare se l'acquisto chiaramente rientra nel, eh, nel, tier, nel livello successivo. Ehm, qualora l'acquisto sia inferiore a 7,99 eh, è possibile attribuire il livello bronzo al cliente. Sostanzialmente questo è un sistema di logica, abbiamo chiaramente dei template per definire questo, che però ti permette di, ehm, di interagire con il cliente, di definire queste logiche eh, senza dover necessariamente passare tramite lo sviluppo IT. Eh, che chiaramente sappiamo che possono volerci settimane se non mesi prima di, di riuscire ad ottenere dei risultati. Um, Detto ciò, questa è la struttura, se vogliamo, del, del programma di loyalty, che però permette di, eh, con lo stesso sistema, con la stessa logica, è possibile, ehm, è possibile sbizzarirsi. Ad esempio, ehm, prendiamo il caso in cui questo cliente diventa un cliente eh, silver. Per i clienti silver, all'interno del nostro programma di loyalty, abbiamo deciso di ehm, potenzialmente concedergli un, un tipo di reward che magari può essere un coupon piuttosto che un, un evento uh, in negozio. È sufficiente aggiungere la parte reward che poi viene automaticamente, um, viene aut automaticamente fatto il claim per il cliente uh, senza che il cliente um, debba compiere alcuna azione, ad esempio mandare una notifica al sales associate per consegnare ad esempio l'invito all'evento piuttosto che sull'e-commerce includere all'interno del pacco con l'integrazione con i gestionali per, eh, per cercare di rendere proprio l'esperienza il più semplice, veloce e il meno dispendiosa possibile. Um, è chiaramente poi necessario definire quello che è l'evento, quello che è il, il tipo di incentivo e, ed il gioco è fatto. Chiaramente vogliamo poi comunicarlo a questo cliente, quindi possiamo o decidere di, fa, di, eh, di aggiornare quello che è il pass, che abbiamo visto prima, piuttosto che ehm, decidere di mandare una email, quindi integrandosi con, abbiamo detto prima, di cassa, ma anche con i sistemi di email marketing automation, è possibile da qui eh, fare direttamente riferimento ad uno specifico funnel, ad uno specifico workflow all'interno dei principali sistemi di email marketing automation. In questo caso chiaramente si tratta di, un, di una demo environment, quindi non è integrata a nessun sistema di email marketing, ma qua sarà possibile eh, vedere la lista di tutti eh, i workflow presenti e far partire in automatico la mail senza, senza dover necessariamente eh, utilizzare sistemi diversi per, per creare questi automatismi. 
Bene, mm, io ho detto tutto eh, riguardo a quello che mi interessava trattare oggi, chiaramente se ehm, qualcuno volesse poi approfondire questo discorso noi saremo a disposizione sia per la parte chiaramente più, più strategica se vogliamo del, dell'argomento legato alla loyalty sia, la, sia per la parte tecnica e ehm, passerei, eh, passerei alle domande sostanzialmente, eh, vediamo se ce n'è qualcuno, chiedo un attimo di pazienza così cerchiamo di vedere se riusciamo a, um, a raccogliere qualche domanda. Allora, nel frattempo ok um, vediamo sì che c'è una domanda um, questa chiederei a, a io la, la traduco in inglese così per, per semplificare il lavoro um, la domanda che chiede in italiano prima, quali sono i tipi di reward e incentivi che, che possiamo offrire? So, Jorn, what are the kind of rewards and, and incentives that we could, uh, we could actually offer? Uh, there was some interest around um, LVR case studies, so okay. how, how, we could, how we could help sure. our potential clients. So, I think the, the, the first thing to answer that question is to differentiate a little bit what Antalva does and what it doesn't do. So what we are not actually is a rewards management platform or provider. So we, we are not the ones going out to source for you, I don't know, a holiday weekend or um, some external rewards. What we built is a platform that could integrate with these type of providers very easily. And we do have some collaborations um, with rewards providers that could manage, you know, um, like a whole portfolio of external rewards for you. Um, but also then obviously you can set up internal rewards such as discounts, such as vouchers that can be redeemed at your e-commerce system, but also special access to services. So our platform is actually just built in the flexible sense that you can create any type of rewards in your mind and we can bring it to life. Sometimes you have to bring in an external partner and sometimes not. So you know, one of the examples I mentioned was this uh, sneaker stuff. So LVR had to, uh, Luisa Roma obviously had to um, build a technology, like a technical access limitation to this club. But other than that, um, it was just basically the same e-commerce platform where people could buy uh, those, those um, shoes. And on our Antavo management platform, we are managing the access to this. So we're making sure that people are in this club, they're mm -hmm. entitled to it. We are managing the fact that people can exchange their points for this access to this club and for the membership in this club, all of that will be run on our platform. So um, in terms of then supporting you with rewards and incentives, I would say yeah. what we can do is we can help you with the design and concept development of the program. So to pick the right rewards and pick the right incentives to make sure you get the customer behavior that you're looking for and to make sure that the KPIs that you want to move are actually moved by the program. So we offer consulting support, I would say, from idea generation to final product launch, where we yeah. can translate your objectives into a concept, and we can even do a business case for you if you want to see how that works on the cost and on the benefit side. Um, that's something you can get in touch with us. Uh, I have a team of loyalty strategists who can support you on that. Great. Mm, it looks like that we are running a bit out of, like, over time. Let's see if, um, since we, we don't have any other questions? So um, I think that's it. Yeah, I mean, let's let's give it another minute or so if anyone wants to ask a question. Um, on that, I think you know, hope you found this interesting. Um, I hope it triggered some thoughts. There was some new information for you. Um, I actually just received a question. Excellent. See. So um, Riprende in italiano. La, eh, la domanda è se la piattaforma può essere integrata con eh, CRM di Microsoft Dynamics. Um, la risposta è sì, è eh, un'integrazione diretta. Chiaramente eh, la parte di cui noi ci occupiamo è tutta la parte data collection. Chiaramente poi questi dati devono poi essere mandati sia a sistemi, ad esempio, di, sia database che a sistemi di CRM, piuttosto che sfruttare al massimo quelli che sono i sistemi di marketing e automation in generale. E quindi sì, la risposta diretta è eh, ci integriamo con Microsoft Dynamics, come anche con 
uh, Salesforce piuttosto che um, Marsis.digital, uh, MailUp e, e altri sistemi di email marketing e CRM oggi più utilizzati. Good, ottimo. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I should talk in Italian or in English, but I think it's. I think you can finish in Italian. You started yeah. in Italian. That's good. You're right. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's, it's consistency. We said that before, right? Yeah. Consistency of right. message. You're right. <laughs> Quindi ehm, ringrazio, ringrazio tutti per, per, aver, per avervi preso parte, qua trovate eh, i nostri contatti, potete mandarci chiaramente una mail eh, se avete voglia e volontà di approfondire uno degli argomenti. Eh, vi manderemo la presentazione, eh, soprattutto sulla prima parte, chiaramente la parte legata alla demo diventa un po' più complicata riuscire a condividere con voi. Eh, niente. Vi ringrazio e auguro a tutti una, una buona giornata. Thank you very much. Okay.